Hello, my name is Dominic Underhall House and welcome to another episode of Moonbreaker. In today's episode, we're going to be having a look at the first of our three beginner lists for each of the captains. So we've got one list for each, and in the last video we looked at sort of the beginner's intro to the game, and today we're going to look specifically at playing a Zax Jakar beginner's list. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be playing versus AI initially, and then we're going to do a PvP game afterwards, and we can just see how it functions in there. So there's no guarantee on winning these, and the reason I put these together is to give you a sort of a simple introduction to how building a list works, building a curve works, and you know a good idea of how to get started. These aren't designed to be hyper competitive, they're designed to be a good starting point, and then you can build your own list from there, find out your own interactions, and start deviating from the first few turns that we're gonna be setting out in this video. So the list itself, is what we've got here. So I'm going to leave it on this screen for the moment. Every one of these lists, we have set it up so that the first five plays that you do, our first five turns, are going to be set out exactly the same every turn. So on this one here, what we're looking at doing is with Zax Jakar, we've gone for Maximus turn one, we're looking at Dead Eye turn two, Axel Pyro turn three, Crosshair turn four, and Furia turn five. So the reason we've gone for this is this is a reasonably sort of high power ranged attacking list. And the reason we wanted to play something out every single turn is just to keep using that cinder efficiently and just showing how efficient cinder usage can end up being a really good way of making sure that you know, you're getting the most out of your resources if you're not familiar with this kind of game. So we're gonna start with versus AI. We're gonna use this exact list and we're gonna play out that exact start in the game and we're gonna see how it plays out from there. So there's quite a few mechanics in the game that aren't necessarily immediately obvious. And one thing when you're building a list is that you need to plan your turns ahead of time. Even when you're putting the list together for the first time, you should have an idea of what you want to do turn one, turn two, turn three. It'll probably vary a bit from that point onwards, but we've just taken that to the extreme and decided to go for all the way up to turn five. And the reason we've chosen these is we're not going to use any of our abilities or any characters whatsoever. This is just going to be to get us to that point. So looking at these assists for this exact reason, we're not going to pick Cinder Infusion because that's just going to change the way that we're looking to play. And it's going to be either Stimburst and Vortex or Ion Storm and Lifeline. So I'm going to pick in this time, I'm going to pick Ion Storm and Lifeline. I'd probably normally pick Stimburst and Vortex Beam here. But the reason I want to choose this is that these basically they make it slightly mismatched between us and the opponent. So we can hit them, they can't hit us as easily. It just gives us a little bit more of an imbalance in terms of if we are playing roughly equal lists. So we're going to start with this. I think, like I said, normally I would be picking these because movement is really valuable, but as you're getting used to the game, you start sort of learning that naturally and sort of figuring out where to move, how to position, that sort of thing. For now, we're just going for sort of raw value and raw stats. And we're going to start with Ion Storm and Lifeline. So we see who goes first. So we're against another Zax. And we are going first. So a lot of times you can choose either to go aggressive and try and hit the opponent. and Or you can try and sort of play it a little bit safe and try and hide from them. With the list that we're playing, we're actually going to go for the aggressive approach. Because we're playing a unit every turn. So we're going to have more things on the board. So this is the lowest modifier I could get. If you hold the right mouse button as you move across, it just shows you how much of a negative you get to hit. So this takes it down to 35. It's not a great chance, but we might as well, given that we're playing the aggressive list. And we did get the hit here, so with Zax, that also pushes them back. That's quite a good start for us. And now remember, we're playing Maximus, Deadeye, Axel Pyro, Crosshair, Furia. So Maximus is going to be our first play, and what we're going to do is we're going to look for basically the biggest modifier we can get here, which is 72. And that means that for them to shoot us, they have to come out of position to do so, making it easier for us to shoot them. So it's all about mitigating you know, how much damage we can take while maximizing how much we can deal. So here we're going to end the turn, and we're going to see what the AI does from here. So if you look here, if they're shooting at Maximus, they're taking minus 72%, and they have played their own Maximus. They're going to take a shot at us. Again, theirs was over actually more terrain than ours was, so that made it harder for them to hit. So in terms of what we want to do here, we can choose between hitting their captain or hitting, hitting their crew. And what we're going to do is we're going to be hitting the crew. The reason for this is if we can consistently take their crew out, 
we've just got more resources on the battlefield than they will. And the important part here is we're going to want to hide Maximus as best as possible from both of these because Maximus is going to be the one who's taking the most damage. So we're going to move Zax first, but we're not going to attack because Zax actually moves the enemy units when we do attack. So then we're going to move over to here. We're going to actually keep a bit of distance here. We want to try and be relatively far back, which does give us a slightly lower chance to hit, but we only really need to hit one of these. There we go. We've got a crit anyway, so that's really good for us. And then we can move back around this corner. We'll get our Zax to shoot this way. So again, good chance to hit here. We did get it. And then we're going to play Deadeye, just like we said. And Deadeye is going to go right behind this terrain. Same reasoning, but this way they're going to find it really hard to get to us without exposing themselves. So now we're in a position where they can obviously come over here and start dealing damage to us. We're going to take probably two, possibly three. At worst four, but there we go. We've taken the two like we'd expect. So they're focusing on our Deadeye, which is absolutely fine. They should be focusing one unit. So they've placed out a mine, and they've got the hit there, and this is the reason that we took Lifeline here. So it restores health to an ally with five or less health, and all we wanted to do in this situation was basically just make it so that things just weren't quite as uh, weren't quite as fair in the direct matchup. So we're going to heal Deadeye. So now all of their work has amounted to nothing. We're going to shoot here. We're going to come down here, and we so we've got two choices here. We can either go for the mine or we can go for the Zax Jakar. So given that they can play a mine every turn and it only does two damage, we're gonna move over here and just get our shots in here. So we missed one. If we miss both, we don't get to move again. So that's why we need to be careful. And then we're gonna hide back this way because next turn, if we need to, we can still come this direction. Now here, we've actually got a minus to hit because of the mine and we don't want to be in range of that. So we're gonna move our whole board state a little bit further this way, but we're just going to move Zax back slightly. And the reason Zax is moving back is to get out of the mine radius, which is not that big because the mine can't move. But we also wanted to increase our chance to hit, so there's nothing in the way here. So we get that hit in here. And what we're also going to do is, as on curve, play our Axel Pyro. And again, we want to keep things out of range of the mines, and we just want to be putting pressure on them. So if you wanted to here, you could use Ion Storm. And that basically reduces their accuracy, means that they're harder to hit. But because we're so far ahead, we don't need to, and we'd rather save this when there's more units to block. So I'm going to press the tab key here to cycle between active units. There's nothing left that can be activated, so we're just going to hit end turn. The reason end turn didn't glow there is because we still had our assist that we could be using. So they've placed orbital strike down here. So what that means is that next turn, if we're still stood in that spot, we're going to take three damage on every unit. So we want to clear this out as much as possible. And it looks like they might be trying to block us in. And here they're going to... Okay, so this is when the gravity disc here pulls the mine into them, uh, into us, and then we take two damage from the mine. So that's absolutely fine. This is just a thing that happens. But what we can do is if we stand here, because this is light cover, we're going to stand just over here. Now, it does look like this, so it says arming here, so it's not armed yet. So we'd normally actually be using Axel Pyro down this side, but because we're doing a list where we're going to have different Cinder, I maybe should have put a different unit into this for this exact reason, we actually are going to be saving it and playing our Crosshair instead. So that means that we should be using Zax to clear this out, Deadeye to deal damage here. We've got a crit, so that's double damage on that one. It's up to a maximum of two. And we're going to move just down this way to be out of the range of the orbital strike. And then Maximus is going to come up here, deal our damage. We've got another crit. So this is going really well for us. And then what we're going to do is we're going to play either... Well, so it's Crosshair that we're playing here. And what we're going to do is play it basically in this direction. So this is a vulnerable spot. We can be hit here. We can absolutely be taken out but we don't need to worry about it because we've got enough damage to potentially take this out next turn. So what we're doing is just making sure that everything that we position is going to have line of sight onto Zax no matter where he moves this turn. So there's nothing we've got apart from obviously Axel, which we're not using, that can see around, they can't see around these corners if it comes to it. So we're just going to end the turn here. There's also, other than Axel, nothing that they can kill either. So they're throwing the mine out. 
This, to me, looks like they're probably going to hit crosshair. Excellent. That's just what we expected. And play one more unit over here. It's a shrapnel. So shrapnel's hard to deal with, but this turn we don't need to worry because we're just going to take out Zax. So the first thing we're going to do is just hit with our Zax here. Get for two damage. We're going to use crosshair to hit here for three. Now, what we're also going to do is just move down here with crosshair because your own models can block your line of sight. So this is why Maximus is then going to come in next. We just need to get one hit off here, essentially. We've got two. We'll move into this corner, bring Deadeye over, and in theory, this should be enough to kill them. We might miss, but there we go. So that's a straightforward way of playing this out. Again, Axel was probably the wrong choice for this list because I didn't account for needing to activate that ability. So what I'll do is I'll actually swap that before we go into PvP, just to make that a little bit clearer for the curve. So we've got some uh, XP on our units here, and that's sort of the general way of playing it out. The important thing is, we spent all of our Cinder efficiently. So there are ways of doing that where you hold three over to the next turn, you have to make a bigger play the next turn, but all you really want to make sure is that you're not letting it go to waste at any point. We don't want to be having Cinder never get used for anything. So what I'm going to do while we're here is swap out Axel Pyro, because Axel Pyro's ability costs Cinder, and that's not what we're looking to do in this list. Now, if we look for Cinder cost units, there are actually a few Cinder cost unit, uh, Cinder units, but none of them are actually. You know, a lot of these use abilities or in other lists, so we're just going to switch over to Aria. Now, Aria is not one of the stronger units in the in the game, but fits our trend of. Range unit, range unit, range unit, range unit, range unit. And with Zax having two damage on attacks, very, very powerful ability to take down a lot of units from distance consistently. So we're now just going to run exactly the same list except with that one change, which again, mistake on my part, shouldn't have had that in there, in a PvP game. And we're going to try and do exactly the same thing. Just play out one unit every turn on curve. So this might not go too well if it's an experienced player, but if we're using things efficiently, trying to position well, getting good angles on things, it means that we've got good use of our Cinder every turn, we're not wasting any resources, and we can start putting some damage onto our opponent. So we're against an Exterior. We don't know what kind of list they're playing, but it's a good thing knowing that we've got the range there. So in this one, Corrosive Particles and Stim Burst looks really good for us because we're going to have a lot of early things dealing multiple damage, and Corrosive is one of the better assists in the game at the moment. Uh, Vortex is good, but Orbital is not as good at the moment. And again, Lifeline Cinder Infusion is just not really what we're doing with Cinder Infusion at the moment, so let's go with this one. It's a very useful set of abilities here. Now we'd hope that our opponent was going first, because it means they get they have to move towards us, but it doesn't matter too much either way, because whatever we, they do, we're playing Maximus, and the important thing is making sure we play them safely. So if they move in any way towards us, in any sort of you know, strong, as in sort of they use their maximum move in any direction, we're going to move and start trying to take some damage off of them. So this is a level one player. This is likely what new players are going to be coming against, is people at that sort of rank. Hopefully they don't look at my rank and think I'm playing some sort of very competitive list, because we're just trying to have a bit of fun here. So once a while, while waiting for them to move, remember there is Maximus, Deadeye, Aria now, Crosshair and Furia, and if you look, every single one of these that we're playing on Curve has got the blue icon showing it's a ranged unit. So that's how we're going to play this. With Zax in general, I actually think he's a very good beginner captain, but I also think that for a beginner to play him, you're actually better off just not using his abilities until you've had a bit more practice because his abilities can backfire a little bit. So Sleeper Mine is quite often your opponent's going to end up dealing damage to you with your sleeper mine and then the gravity disc you end up just playing things in you know moving things for two cinder that might not be in the optimal direction hopefully your opponent isn't afk and they haven't just uh they've just realized it's their turn now we'll play this out and see if this uh actually ends up being a game but as it stands at the moment it looks like they may not be in there at all okay so unfortunately we didn't get a game that time so we'll have to queue up another one but that's, uh, that, that could have been quite a good game for us to start with. So let's queue up again, another public game, and see what we can get. And again, this is exactly the experience that you should be having as a new player, is into these exact sort of queues.
So while the the player population is lower, you'll end up with more varied matchups. So for instance here, we know this player's got a lot of experience because they've got a level 50 accounts, because they've got the Deathbot Extilio skin. Now on a similar note here, this actually changes things quite a lot with these. We're going to go with the same Lifeline and Iron Storm for the same reason, but we could have played Disruptor Beam and Escape Hatch to basically Disruptor Beam moves things apart. It's like a sort of a, an AoE that pushes things out, and Escape Hatch plays our most expensive unit for free. But we're going to stick with Lifeline and Ion Storm for the same reason as we did in the versus AI game. So we're actually against a level 100 account. So we're going to have to see how we do here. The chances are they're going to be a very good player. Okay, so what we're going to look at first is, is there any line of sight onto any of their units? We know clearly there isn't. So what we're going to do is just move slightly back and play our own one drop somewhere safe. So we obviously want to be just competing on that front with our opponent and you know, trying to make sure that we play things where it's hard for them to move. So if you look at this, if Maxwell moves over here, the chances of him getting line of sight are actually pretty slim. And their next play is Deadeye. So they're playing exactly the same units to begin with as us. We have got a line over here which gets us a small chance of hitting Maximus. I think this is probably a mistake, but we're going to take it just because we want to try. So it's only a 29% chance, but why not give it a go? We did get the hit. So what we're also going to do in that case is go for this Maximus hit, but we don't have another good option around that way. So if we just go in, say... Ooh, this is pretty bad all in all. You know what? I actually think we maybe even just hide this turn, because I think the chance of this hitting is so low, we're probably better off just hiding and playing our own Deadeye. So we're making a little wall of range units here that they're going to be coming for us, but we've at least got some damage off that they haven't. Next turn, yeah, from here, we should be able to start moving towards Extilio. The interesting thing here, so we're actually okay with it being Zax at the front, because a lot of the time we want our range units, sorry, we want their damage to be going at our captain rather than our units initially, just because that way it gives us more options in terms of you keeping our units alive. So I'm curious as to what they play here because I feel like they should have an assist because there's a good chance that we can actually kill their Maximus here and that would actually be quite a big swing. Okay, they have, okay they've got lifeline. So we need to deal six damage to Maximus to kill it, but we have six damage on the battlefield. But what we are gonna do is use Ion Storm on everything that they have to offer. So with Zax, what we want to do is we're going to stay just out of range of Exterior. We need to go slightly further back because he has the uh, AoE effect. Maximus can just go up straight up and just go for a really quick hard hit. Make sure we've got as much chance to hit that as possible. And what we could also do if we wanted to is go up this way to make it harder for them to hit us back because of distance. So I actually think that's what we're going to do. We're going to come here, shoot this. And we take our Zax shot as well. 70% chance. So we did miss. That's absolutely fine. These things happen. And we're just going to play Aria back up here. Again, safe. And move our Maximus back this way. So pressing tab. Nothing left to go. And we're going to end the turn here. So they can basically play a little bit more aggressively into us. If this was... So this is Axel Pyro. This is a unit we really want to kill. Because he's very useful against the things we've got. But we also need to see what comes over here. So the way that we're playing this game is we're trying to trade out units. So we want to kill their units without them being able to kill ours. So that's why we've got this uh, Ion Storm and we're really glad for it because even though we missed here, there's a good chance that Maximus misses as well. Axel Pyro doesn't even look... Ah, oh, they've got a Disruptor, this looks like. They're going to bounce things in a couple of different directions. So they're trying to see if they can get Axel to here to try and get damage onto both of these. There we go. So what... I, ooh. Okay, so they're going for Deadeye instead, it looks like. So they're just going to go for... We've got the two. That's going to be minimum three, because it burns in our turn as well. If they hit... There we go. They got one of those. So this is going to kill our Deadeye, because they it deals one damage at the start of our turn from the burn from Axel Pyro. Again, we're not, we're not too worried about this because we can now kill their Maximus and put a lot of damage down on their actual Pyro if we needed to. 
as it turns out. They're going to shield their Axel Pyro, so I actually just think that we focus on dealing damage to their Maximus and killing it with our Maximus. And again, what we're going to do this time is just move slightly further away because Axel Pyro is a threat here. We're going to move over here and we're going to take our shot at their Deadeye because Deadeye doesn't have the shield. So here is a 35% chance to hit. So actually, I don't think we've got any good lines of sight onto things we really want to shoot at. So what we're going to do is we're just going to move straight away from Exilior and try and shoot him so that he goes backwards. Ah, he's blocked in slightly, so we couldn't quite get the knockback there. So next, we're on to our fourth play, and this is going to be Crosshair. So we know what their assists are. We know there's not too much to be scared of right now. We're still going to play Crosshair fairly defensively, and we're just going to play it behind Aria. And again, tab, we've used everything we can. I feel fairly safe at the moment. So, so far, they've got five units on the bridge. They've got two on the battlefield. We've got four on the bridge, three on the battlefield. So we're actually very equal in terms of where we currently are sitting. What they don't know is that we've got lifeline. So if they go for the Axel Pyro here, healing removes the Axel Pyro burn and also restores all of the health that we've lost. So there's a good chance that this will go well for us, but we do need to start worrying about what we do about Exilior. So this is where the game's going to change slightly. Okay, they've got Quetzali. So Quetzali's terrifying, basically. Quetzali allows things to move multiple times, up to a total of five additional movement per turn. Uh, their Deadeye has already attacked, though, but if they can just get Exilior right in the middle... Yeah, Exilior can kill here. So we're going to lose our Aria. Again, this list is not designed to be played against a, uh, a level 100 player, so we're doing quite well even considering that. We have to fi figure out what our best route is here to win using this same method of you know, ticking up, and it might even just be trying to find a way to deal with Quetzali. So, unfortunately, we don't have line of sight onto Quetzali because Crosshair does extra damage versus units even on the turn that they've come in. So what we're going to need to do is try and take out the units dealing the damage to us. So we're going to start with that with Axel Pyro. We're going to move over here and shoot Axel. So this looks like it does three. It will only do two because they've got an Exilior Shield on. It did zero. Maybe it was multiple shields in that case. It may have been multiple shields. I might have uh, not realized that there were many on there. So that is uh, actually a pretty bad move. We're going to use our Maximus to attack here. And the reason we're moving this way is because it makes it harder for them to get to us with Quetzali. So we can actually move Quetzali back a little here, but then we're pinning ourselves into a corner against them, and I'm kind of worried about that anyway. So I think we just need to go for the same approach. And this way we're moving back so we've got less side of sight here. Shoot this way. And then we're actually going to heal Crosshair and just play out our Furia as far back as possible. Just about, not far back, just about here actually, because this means that they can't quite get in range. So we've got our Ion Storm next turn, which does reduce a bit of damage, but there's a good chance that they can kill one or both of these units. So Maximus is absolutely dead. He's gonna die to the actual Pyro burn. And given that, it's actually very likely we die to Exilior as well. So we might end up on the game plan of what Furia does is every turn you don't attack with her, she takes a damage, but then she gains three damage for her next attack. So we might even have to just try and get her to stack up and up and up until we can kill their Exilior in one shot. Most likely, I'm going to be using Zax to try and kill their Axel Pyro, because now's the point where getting the units out isn't quite the same. Yep, so the way that this works is both of these are actually dead because of the burn. And this is going to be their lifeline to heal Axel Pyro up to full. So we are in trouble here. This isn't a, a good situation for us. We've lost two more units, so they're going to have seven, and we're essentially going to have five. Oh, sorry, four. So we're actually very far behind. But again, this list, not designed to be versus a level 100 opponent, I think we're holding our own quite well. What we're going to have to do next turn is find a way to try and kill either Axel Pyro or Deadeye. 
So they're going to be where we're looking at moving because we can't take this much damage every single turn. We also have to bear in mind that we're going to be hit by uh, Exilior wherever we are because Quetzali's taken up spot in the middle of the battlefield. So, Furia is going to come over here and take a 67% chance to kill Deadeye. Hopefully we get it. We do. Perfect. So again though, Furia can die to Exilior here. Uh, reducing accuracy doesn't matter for Axel Pyro or Quetzali, so it's quite unfortunate. So we're just going to start chipping away at damage on Exilior and running away slightly. And then because we need to be defensive, we've got both Stitchy McPatchy, Beatrice Enforcer and Chuck and Co are all really good defensive units. What I'm going to play is it's going to be... In fact, we are going to place this here because we want to try and keep our Furia alive. So we're actually going to place Chuck and Co up here. And we're going to place... Let's go with Stitchy McPatchy back here because this way we can potentially heal things next turn. So Beatrice is another good defensive unit, but we're trying to basically keep ourselves a little bit safe. As we said before, there's a very good chance that Beatrice just dies next turn, this turn even. So we're just trying to make sure we can keep her as safe as possible. It might not work, because they only need to do two with Exterior, so they just need to get in range. Uh, ooh, oh, they've got one more movement, it looks like. Yeah, they have. We were close. But they can just spin here for two Cinder, and it guarantees that we lose Furia. Uh, and they're gonna, there you go, they can disrupt this in as well. So this is why Quetzali is really good in Exilior lists. But overall, I actually don't think we've done too bad. Again, this is very much a learn to play the game list. If we were playing in a real sort of a situation where we wanted to be competitive, we wouldn't necessarily be playing things out every single turn. One, two, three, four, five. We'd be using other abilities. This is just to get you used to the game and you know getting a good idea of how curving out can work. So as we look through the other lists, we've got another one set up for Exilio, which is going to be next. And the last one is going to be looking at Astra. And the Astra one actually has a slightly different opening. So we're going to have a few different varieties of these and see how they work. We, we're not expecting every list to win. That's the important part is that you know, not every list is going to be the way that you know the meta should be from then on. So what we're going to do here is we're going to show off what Chuck and Co can do. So Chuck and Co can move over here. We can punch Quetzali, get our two damage in, and it has ability called Toss It, which now means if we do this, Quetzali is so far away that it's very unlikely that they can actually keep safe versus us. So we're going to move away with Stitch and McPatchy, heal ourselves. We're going to use a ranged attack here. So this is breaking shields and that sort of thing. Place Beatrice Enforcer here to try and make it harder for things to move. The problem is here they can crosshair onto Beatrice. So the chances of us surviving here are very slim. But we can try and we can do things like gravity disc things in a different direction. I think, to be honest, I'm probably just going to use it because we've got enough Cinder, to just move Chuck and Co slightly closer this way to try and get a bit of impact in for next turn. It's not going to do much, but it'll help. So here, Beatrice is going to take four from cross Crosshair already because she didn't move this turn. There we go, four damage. And then both Exilior hits will kill this, but it does take up all of his use for this turn. And I don't think we can get in range with Axel Pyro quite yet. So we're out of units. We didn't have anything to use lifeline on yet because this was obviously, if it lived a turn, it would be much more important. This turn we can use it. And we just need to basically keep damaging Exilior at this point because I'm not sure what other routes we've got to victory. They've got three more units they haven't even deployed. So we are in a lot of trouble. But it's not completely over, but it's not looking good. So the plan here is probably going to be okay yeah, so there's Torium. so that's an easy choice for what we're going to do next turn we're going to be using Zax to pull Torian away because Torian gives us a, basically a minus to hit for the nearest unit so we're going to be using Torian to pull we're going to pull Torian this way with Zax we're going to be attacking we're going to be placing a mine down to block it and then there you go Quetzali's just running away at this point so we use our lifeline on Stitch McPatchy that should get rid of the burn. See, yep, the burn's gone. 
and then we can heal ourselves here on Zax. We will use our gravity disc to pull Torian this way. So that's just away from their Zax. And if we're playing a sleeper mine to try and block things in, playing it just outside of range of their uh, their exterior will be good. So we're just going to hit here first, get our one damage in for the turn, run away with both. However, we should have placed a mine first, actually, come to think of it. And they've got the disruptor, so they might even be able to throw this into us. So what we're going to do is also they're going to move over here. I'm going to start bringing Crankbait, uh, sorry, Crank Chuck and Co around the side and just try and, oh, we got a crit as well. And we are going to use us into the toss just to get a bit of extra damage in. It's only one damage, but this is likely to add up. So now it is absolutely possible they could get into us and they can get start getting you know, strong hits on us again. But we're trying to just keep away from them, kite them around a little bit. And you can see here that as much as we've probably lost this game, we're not completely out of it yet. We're still in with at least some part of a shot. So Chuck and Co is doing a good job. It's going to be useful here. Yeah, this is where Zach's... So Zach's going into his own mine is never good. <laughs> never good at all. Zach's is quite likely to die to his own mind at some games, which is why a lot of the time you don't use them until you know what you're doing. So here... Luckily, if they spin with Extilior, it kills the mine as well. It, so it doesn't really make a difference much in terms of damage. But we can try and just sort of slow the game down a little bit. Yeah. There we go. So we're taking a lot of damage. This is what we thought would be happening. Axel Pyro is trying to... Oh, wow, there's an angle there for both. I didn't think there would be an angle for both. I'll be completely honest there. Uh, but I think here we can actually start kiting things out a little bit again. Yep, so, ooh, Crosshair missing. So we can actually, we're in with a chance of killing Crosshair. Oh, they've got the lifeline, of course they have. So that's uh, awkward in itself. Okay, so now we're getting blocked in. So we have to gravity, well, the gravity pull those away, gravity disc. I'm going to keep saying the word gravity until it's the right thing I need to say. Uh, we're going to keep shooting exterior. That was a, a pretty upsetting miss. That was a, not that low of a chance to hit. So we're going to move back here. Place a mine here, again, making it difficult for them to get to us. We want it out of range of us. They don't have their disruptor this turn. We'll move up here and heal again. Um, I still think we're on this plan here. I've just move and hit. We missed with a minus 40, but that again, it's a thing that could happen. Uh, we are just going to keep tossing them away. And then we're going to use this minus on everyone that can hit. So they all get minus hit next, minus chance to hit next turn. So it might look like we're just dragging this game out, but there is a world in which we can get their lifeline on cooldown. Oh, okay, now we're in trouble. <laughs> They've just thrown our own mine at us. <laughs> There's a world in which we can end, you know, end up poking this down and before lifeline is back up realistically we need to be taking out their crew not their captain but i've just not really found a good opportunity to go for it and this is going to be where we start losing because here we're going to be taking too much damage to consistently survive they're going to be able to move in on us next turn they've got disruptor so at this point i think most of our hope is now lost however we're not giving up that easy that's not who we are we're going to be uh trying our best especially to take out axel pyro if we can live here we might go over here try and punch axel pyro this way and go get a couple of attacks in the fact that these are missing every time is also quite upsetting you know we've got a bit unlucky on that front but we're not yeah this is their last unit so it is shrapnel that's terrifying and they're gonna all take two damage yeah so we're very nearly dead here so we're just going to see if we can get anything done on this front. Uh, it was that multiple shields anyway, so yeah, we're in a deep lot of trouble here. I don't think there's anything we can do unless we get melee attacks onto this and crits. So let's just try and get a couple of crits. We did get... That was interesting. Because I didn't think he had any shields left on him, and it still only did one damage with the crit. So that's interesting to me. I'm not quite sure that that's how that's meant to work. 
Uh, we're going to place the sleeper mine here, so uh, face up this way. So Extilio might not be able to get past, but Chuck and Co can't throw it directly at our face. Uh, we're going to move over here. I, I don't know how we avoid shrapnel is the issue here. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure we are in the realms of game over here. We'll just gravity disk these things back a little. See if we can keep around for a turn. So bearing in mind here that uh, Stitchy's going to die next turn anyway. But again, so this is a very much a beginner's list. We haven't had, you know, a competitive list here whatsoever. We're against a maximum level player. And honestly, I don't think we've done too bad. Like, we've only killed two of their units, but we've survived a really long time. We've made it difficult for them. We've nearly taken a third. We've had a couple of misses, and even through their healing, we've done quite well. So we are actually going to survive another turn if they have no more attacks here. Oh no, we're burning, so there we are. We lose the game here. But there we go. I actually enjoyed that game. I don't mind losing in that sort of situation. It was, again, a long and drawn out game, but I think we held our own well considering this is a beginner deck against a high level player. So it just shows that you can do good things without needing to have, you know, the best deck, the best list. You know, you can work out your own things, but this is a really good place to start. So hopefully you've enjoyed that. I have even playing it. I don't mind losing because 50% of the game someone's going to lose. So you might as well enjoy those too. Uh, leave any comments you want. If you've got any other suggestions for new players, don't forget to like, subscribe. Keep, yeah, every single notification really does boost my mood. I check every single one that I get. And other than that, have a good day. Thank you.